I actually, um, I streamed the first half of this game a while back. Maybe like six months ago, I can't even remember. Um, definitely before I had second COVID, and so this is going to be the second half of the game, unfortunately. Hi Lisa, welcome to the Super Luminal. As I was saying, this is the second half of the game because I played the first half, like, half a year ago or something. I actually haven't played it since then, so it'll be amusing to see whether or not I'm capable of solving any of these puzzles. I'm not great at puzzle solving, which is curious when you consider that I'm about to start a Let's Play of Mist next week. So Superluminal is aesthetically themed around, um, I guess you could call it like mid-90s multimedia software, but the game itself uses as its puzzle mechanic perspective. So you can find different things in different places and make them look around in different ways and, and then they pop into existence or out of existence or you can recontextualize things by by picking it up and moving it around. This I'm pretty sure should just turn into a, a door if I can get it at the right angle, but I think I need to be above to make that work. Oh, you say that, but I've just been enjoying how easy I've been finding Mist, actually. I've got the first three episodes recorded, so I can start... Um, Ah, can I bring this with me? No, I can't. So yeah, the game's main mechanical gimmick is that you can recontextualize things by changing their context and their perspective. Which means if I can get up on here, I should be able to grab this and take it with me. Which therefore means that I can get up high and open this door. But yeah, I've been surprised by how easy I've been finding the puzzles in Mist. Obviously, I've solved many of them before in the past. Oh, actually, one thing I should mention also is that this game is uh, sort of a weird... <laughs> That's delightful. No, I did. I got halfway through this, but I didn't finish it. So I thought, since this week I'm doing variety and playing whatever I want... Hi, gamers. I thought, since I'm doing whatever I want this week, I might as well finish it. Um, and then next week, of course, we'll be starting to play one of the most classic games of all time, Half-Life. I believe that's how it's pronounced, Half-Life. Can I just- I want to kind of want to take this with me anyway, actually. Fuck it, let's bring the door. So yeah, the visuals... Well, it's not that I'm doing it before Half-Life, it's that I did start playing it. Um, that's, actually, uh, that's actually a piece of graffiti that appears all the way through the entire game. It's a recurring theme because this is a dream Hello. state. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'm just popping in to give you a quick update on where you are. We still don't know, but please keep moving forward and hopefully you prefer frequent updates to being reminded that you are completely lost. Actually, now that I think about it, I've done this puzzle before. I've done... I've done some of these puzzles before. Is this... Did this start the game over instead of... Retaining... My previous save? That's strange. This might actually be near the beginning of the game. If that's the case, I'm going to be irritated. Because I did make it most of the way through last time, but whatever. We can just... Go back to solving puzzles, I guess. Yeah, actually, I believe there was a similar idea for that before they got rid of it. Oh, I need to get up on the top of here, right? Uh, this is about a third of the way through. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I've been way past this. Um, but yeah, so the theme of the game is that you're, you're undergoing some kind of... Uh, brain therapy, I guess, that descends you into a dream state so that you can confront your, your inner problems. Uh, oh, hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Am I supposed to go up there or through there? Is one of these a secret? I love secrets. I remember, I think I remember doing this in the past. Can I climb up on that? If I, if I make a smaller one and I climb up on the box... Does that have physics collision? 
Do I think it does? No, okay. Well, it's definitely too high for me to reach just yet. I don't have anything else that's movable. There's probably something out here that will let me get up there. But yeah, so you're... And anyway, something goes wrong and you descend too deep into your dream and get lost. And uh, the comically polite doctors in charge of this experimental brain therapy situation are quietly ushering you, telling you to go deeper in order to try and escape as the puzzles get weirder. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and we still can't find you. But you should now have access to a series of elevators that should trigger your subconscious to gradually wake you up. You should also find a variety of emergency exit signs that should lead you to them. Will all of this work? Absolutely. The curious thing about Mist is that I remember what the puzzles are, but not how to solve them. But just knowing what the puzzles are makes them a lot easier to solve. So if you're curious about that, make sure you check out uh, my YouTube channel on Monday, because that's when those will start going up. But there's something I really enjoy about some of the... Is that...? No, okay. Some of the ideas in this game and the way it presents conceptual objects. It's got these, I mean, it's called super luminal and it has these, super liminal and it has these liminal spaces in it, which makes sense. The entire space being designed around this kind of endless hotel lobby. Although what it really reminds me of is uh, care homes more than anything else, which is kind of grim when you consider that you're currently having your brain expanded. There must be something in here I can interact with. Is there something about the roof, maybe? It looks like I need to pick something up that will fill in this space. So is there a, like a door around? I mean, that's a, that's a fire alarm way higher up than it should be. Is that a clue? Oh, hey, I remember that room from six months ago when I played the first part of this. But yeah, that's what's so strange is that like the, the mist puzzles are actually really easy because mist kind of has this reputation as be of being incredibly enigmatic and having these really difficult puzzles. But I guess that maybe is the opinion developed by people who were playing mist at the time who, who weren't used to playing the puzzle games because the puzzles in mist is significantly easier than the puzzles in most point and click adventure games which are incomprehensibly fiendish i feel like this is getting me nowhere am i missing something oh well i did something can i pull the fire alarms will that help that one's been pulled Apologies for the sniffles, my, my body just decides to do this arbitrarily, and usually at the worst moment. I feel like I must be forgetting something. Like, I know what the puzzle is here, I need to find a doorway and recontextualise it into that space. But this is the only doorway I have and I can't pick it up. But uh, yeah, I'm only halfway through Mist though. I've only recorded the first few episodes, so maybe I'll have more trouble later on. But what's bothering me right now is just that I can't f find the tools I need to solve this problem. Maybe if I just go back to the other room and see if there's something I can do with the other doorway. As appropriate for a puzzle game, it's puzzling. I tend to get really stuck on these kinds of puzzle games. These these are the sort of like spatial logic ones rather than uh, kind of sequence of events puzzles. I've definitely had less trouble playing things like... Can I climb on this one? Uh, playing things like Mist that I have, th playing things like, uh, well, like Super Luminal. Uh, yeah, I bet that'll let me get up there. should be enough, I think. 
might be a bit too big. Hop, 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 fantastic. Oh, okay, well that's, this is the opposite of helpful. It's a bin with some, a, a die in it, okay. Hmm. Yeah, they've clearly thought about liminal spaces and picked some, but they've also... I mentioned previously that this has... it's got kind of like a 90s multimedia vibe, and I think that a lot of the objects in it, these kind of like archetypical objects that were often used for... kind of like, um... generic images in... in early... in early CG rendering. You know, like the iconic teapot. There's kind of like smooth untextured things of flowers can i bring that through i cannot okay so why do i have a why do i have an apple shaped die will i die if i do this no yeah exactly it's very windows 95 that's actually one of the other reasons i felt like playing this because i felt i've had this kind of strong nostalgia for 90s multimedia software lately. I've kind of wanted to go back and play the, the puzzle dungeon thing from Encarta, the software encyclopedia. Or just other stuff I remember from my childhood. But yeah, like chess pieces are a very popular sort of generic CG object for people's like first time rendering things in CG. Is this pointless then? What's this for? It's got apples on it. I can tell that much. Oh, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Um. Okay. Huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I may have broken the game now. Um. Oh, there it is. It popped out of the wall. It's fine. It's not lost in the infinite void between the outer bounds forever. These doors don't look accessible either. So if I continue back to where I where I was. Oh yeah, I, I, I always was bit really pleased the one time in ten I knew an answer. It had those little torches that you could use to to find your way as well. I used to basically try and break the game and try and find a way through that didn't require me to answer questions that I couldn't possibly answer. Is there something in a trash can? Is that a clue? Is there a teeny tiny door hidden somewhere? This is... it's weird that this is so much harder than the other puzzles of the game where I've gotten as stuck as this on... on some puzzles where you just kind of... There's some weird objects in this room and they can definitely interact in certain ways in order to solve the puzzle, but I can't figure out the correct ordering of it to make it work. What the hell am I supposed to do here? I don't have any- have I forgotten about a power I'm supposed to have? Jump, rotate, vertical, look up, I don't see anything. I can jump and I can grab and or interact and that's all I've got for going for me. Yeah, there's a fire alarm way up there but I can't reach it and it seems to have been pulled already. Or maybe it's not. Uh, I guess it's something else. Maybe it's a fire detector. I can't crouch either. Reveal me your secrets. Reveal me your secrets! This is unacceptable. Hmm. You can only be stuck in two rooms for, for so long before you go completely fucking insane. Which I say both as an attempt, you know, someone attempting to solve puzzles in a video game, but I also say as someone with claustrophobia. <laughs> can I jump off of here? Because that's definitely a place I was ages ago. can't take anything through these barriers, so that's definitely not part of solving the problem. 
But what was the point of this secret place? Can I do something with windows? Are there 95 of them? Are there 95? Oh, shadows cast by the moon. I shall have to have a look in a second after I continue wasting my time trying to solve this problem over here. What does that say? Electrical shock hazard. Disconnect power before opening condenser fan grill. I thought there would be some kind of joke about how you're in a dream state, but nope. Seems like that's just a completely normal warning sign. Staircon, annual conference this week. I mean, sure, like... A convention for staircases? Is that a clue? I'm starting to go crazy. Everything is connected. There's, a, there's, there's secret layers to what's going on here. I can't see the moon on this side, right? Or, oh, is it over there? It's very far away. I wish this game had a sprint button, actually. I think that the main thing, the one really frustrating thing, apart from all the puzzles, is not having a sprint button to get me back and forth between these. Okay, so the moon. The moon? The shadows cast by the moon. Hmm. You're right that it's one of the only, like, interactable, or not interactable, but, like, alignment-based positioning things that I can see, but I can't see an angle where it makes anything. And even if it did, it wouldn't be the right kind of a thing. The moon is- I mean, okay, look, the moon is- all of these pictures have the moon in them, right? So that's got to be a clue that the moon is relevant. Did it move? Did it move? What is your meaning? Answer my questions, moon. Moon! Moon! Moon. Can I see the moon from back here? No, and I would have seen something on the floor. I do think that this game really should give the player more options for expressing their frustration when stuck on a stuck on a puzzle. Like it has to be something to do with the moon in the open windows, right? But I can't seem to get an angle on them that makes them be different. Or the moon. Oh! Okay. <laughs> well, I was clearly making this way harder than it had to be. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. In the event that this elevator does not wake you up, Please don't interact with anything that strikes you as psychologically significant, as we will no longer have any way of controlling it. For example, if you see your parents, please punch them in the face as hard as you can and immediately run away. There's definitely something interesting, in my opinion, about the, the humour of the game, because I find that a lot of the puzzles are really, really funny. There's a really strong sense of humour to a lot of the puzzles. Like this one, you know, you spend ages getting fucked up over how you can't make the... solve the puzzle, and then it's literally the moon, and it makes a pleasant little pop noise as you pick it up. But I'm obviously taking the moon with me. Um... But the actual writing in it is is supposed to be kind of funny and wry, and they've, they're obviously riffing on the portal narrator, but I don't think it works that well. Don't get lost. What if there's a fire? Don't meet your sister-in-law. Regular person has three to five dreams a night. Is that is that true? I wonder if that's actually based on anything. Seize the day. Other Somnusculpt resorts are waiting for you. Ooh, the fret. I was reading that. Excuse me. Rude. I definitely think I've been reset, because now that I think about it, I remember solving that moon puzzle in the past. So I think we keep getting reset to this room as we attempt to dig deeper. Or rooms like this as we attempt to dig deeper through our own subconscious on this journey to the centre of the mind in order to solve our deep-seated psychological problems, which, honestly, don't we all wish we could do that? Um, I know I could. I think I've tried, I think I've tried all of these so far. 
Red, green, diet, random, baking, mini, and water soda. I want my soda. Rude. Never trust machines, they're always up to something. At the very least, not giving you your soda. This is an automated message for all patients who attempted to use an alternate pathway to access the next phase of Somnasculpt therapy, but who have become trapped in a dream state paradox instead. Their decisions imply a failure of orientation, which reflects negatively on the standard orientation protocol. You will rectify this failure immediately. So the thing I was saying about the kind of the humor of the game is that I think a lot of its humor resides in its in its physical interactions. There's a, a genuine sense of delight. I remember this when I was playing it previously. This kind of genuine joy at the way that things interact with one another and the way things pop in and out of existence and do strange things. And I definitely I definitely remember this. Perception is reality. We'll get through this. Oh, that's kind of trippy. I don't like that. Wiring diagram for a bedra bedrading schema, I guess. I guess stuck on something. Well, this seems convenient. Easiest puzzle so far. You know, when they say you can't take it with you, they really aren't talking about hyperliminal, arbitrary, brain-based dreamscapes. Oh, cubism. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I guess we can split. Love to hopping. One of the other things I've noticed is that... Uh, <laughs> Basically, the clever thing it does is to constantly subvert your expectations, no matter what you're doing. Whenever you do something that you think should react in a certain way, they subvert your expectation and do something completely unexpected, and that's a really simple form of humour, and it's also delightful and joyful. Ooh, I've not had to play with a, a torch before. What's behind here? Interesting. Professional tip, the average adult can only withstand three to five dreams per night. Once this threshold is eclipsed by entering more dreams, your mind will suffer an explosive mental overload, reorienting you for the emergency exit protocol. Please subject yourself to explosive mental overload. Oh, buddy. Uh, that's not, like... You don't really know my life, do you, computer voice? Explosive mental overload? Honey, I was born of this. Only one soda. Only one soda per each. Which is unfair. Let's... Crack that one open also. Oh, these ones are all wiggly. Wiggliest dice imaginable. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'd be going there for a second. The only, the only puzzle I really remember before I find- Oh, I definitely remember this one. This has like, they go up out of the floor. Yeah, that's right. So this is like a sliding block puzzle almost. It is fun the way they constantly introduce new mechanics as you go. That's one of the things I remember fondly from last time I was playing this. Oh, I can't move this if I'm standing on it, that's a shame. But yeah, no, I feel like we Please got reset to the start of the game. To volunteer for the risks associated with explosive mental overload implies a misunderstanding of all other solutions, all of which are far more traumatic and likelier to result in catastrophe. I am not capable of suboptimal suggestions. 
Please exit this dream as soon as possible. Well, it looks like it looks like I've killed that one, which means that it is correctly a die. Also, good noises. Guess I'll take one of these. But it is fun the way they just like it gives you the recontextualization mechanic, and then it gives you various other ways to play with it, and then it introduces another mechanic, and then you get another sequence of puzzles that play with that in various different ways. But all in all, I really love the way... I've definitely had dreams like that. Uh, I really love the way... Which way did I come in? Oh, there's only one way for me to go here. I really love the sort of gen gentle piano jazz going in the background, the sort of quiet gentil gentility of it. It's It does have this sort of archetypical conceptual object tone, but it also has this sleepy in-betweeny space, which is suitable to something named what it is. Emotions, expectations, highly affect dreams. You are here. Test us so far, blah, 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 blah. People only dream of ordinary objects. Boring. Dream layers of the mind. So I guess the implication is that feeling lucky, so are we. Colliculus Casino and Amusements, opening weekend, December 12th, blah, blah, blah. Also, it does have these playful loading bars, which I appreciate. I was about to say I have this installed on my SSD, so it really shouldn't be taking a while to load, but that's not actually the case, I forgot. It's still installed on my old hard drive, which I plugged into my new... Well, it's not a new computer, but when I uh, replaced my, my, my chip, my processor on my PC, some of my games are on my old hard drive and some of them are on the new, new shiny SSD that I included. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and despite touring the Waterfall Serenity Zone in the previous section you've just completed, you may still be experiencing feelings of worthlessness and self-doubt. Why do I feel like everything is going wrong, even when the sun is shining? It's the depression. It's the depression, my dude. Aren't you a psychotherapist? You know how this works. Ooh, green soda. That's my favourite one. They changed the recipe a little while back, so it's not as nice as it used to be, but um, you can still get a decent bit of flavour out of green soda. Oh, this is where it starts to starts to play with horror tropes, because this game does have this uh, really interesting understanding of the way that the tropes of video games work, and, and it plays with them in interesting ways as well. Which is, is not unusual for a a well-made indie game to do. Yeah, I've definitely been through all of this before. Interesting. I might as well have just started the game over, but I didn't, uh, didn't realise that it would not, in fact, still have my saved game. Yeah, see, here we have, ooh, a blood trail, perhaps? Spooky. Emergency generator this way. <laughs> Monday, murder. Tuesday, murder. Wednesday, murder. Thursday, murder. Friday, murder. Saturday, murder. Sunday, beans. Sunday beans are my favourite kinds of beans. Um, you ever had a bean Sunday? Oh, it's great. You just put the whipped cream on top. It all, it all piles up. It's very delicious. world's most menacing pot plants. This is what it's like every time I enter my flatmate's bedroom. That woman has most of a jungle in her house. This is just a fun joke, really. <laughs> die, 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 die. Diet! Why not try our new diet soda? It's so good, you'll croak. This is just rude. This is my- like, how much rent are you paying that you're slamming doors in my subconscious, okay? Like, who gave you permission? This is a big hole. Am I dead? No, we're cool. It's fine. Oh. 
What a puzzling experience. Ho, 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 ho. Is that? Oh, that's the edge of this. I bet this puzzle would be really easy to solve if you just went into the settings and cranked up the gamma. Which is how, back in the day, we used to solve these kinds of puzzles when they would show up in first-person shooters for the mandatory platforming section in the middle of a 1992 shooter that you just... Wait, 1990... There weren't any shooters in 1992, apart from maybe Castle Wolfenstein. I know that Doom was 1993. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to talk more about the feelings of worthlessness and self-doubt I mentioned before. Bro, can we not go you into it? You feel this way because you want the kind of happy life you see all around you. The kind you know everyone else is enjoying. And that's exactly why we're here to help. Buddy, I play video games to not think about that stuff. They do love to do the recontextualization. In fact, every single part of this game and every single fun bit of it is boils down to a clever use of the concept of recontextualization. Is it a spooky man? No, it's just the same chest pieces that you've seen everywhere. Oh, I could go for some rice cakes. I don't particularly like assorted candies though. Hmm. I guess you could say that this game gets pretty dark as you go along. Ho 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 ho. Hee 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 hoo hoo hoo. And other puns made by me. Self-critical automaton. Mediocre pun master extraordinaire. Warning. You were advised to subject yourself to explosive mental overload by descending into additional dreams but have now descended into a dream within a dream instead, disorienting yourself even further. You are responsible for failing to make this crucial distinction. You appear to have fucked up by doing exactly the thing we told you to do. Have you considered not doing the thing that we told you to do? Can I, if I make this really big, will it give me all the light? Oh, that works. Uh, I cannot get through here. Is there perhaps another way? Don't look like it. Or oh, okay. No, there absolutely is another way. There's al there's always another way. As Batman once famously said. Although he did it with the sound of someone who was um, attempting to use their larynx to angle grind some kind of flat surface, which is not very good for your larynx, generally speaking. Ah, that's not diet soda. That's green soda. I want a diet in the bin. Well, I've seen this trick before. Love the noise it makes. Full disclosure, like half of these puzzles, I just remember what the solution is from before. Which means that we don't get the wonderful fake out of when you come through the dark area and think you found a way out, but then it's just a brick wall. Which is one of my favorite, like, journey to the center of the mind tropes. If it was good enough for the Matrix, 1999, it's good enough for me now. Did you know that unintentional multi-dream layering occurs in less than 1% of patients? This correlates strongly with the 99% of patients who are able to follow simple instructions from the standard orientation protocol. I think one of the problems with this game is actually that they, they clearly think they're being funny with the writing. They're so desperately aping portal with the, you know, the creepy robot lady. And like, sure, like, Portal was great, but if you can't write it as well as they did, and Valve do have some of the best writers in the business, then it just doesn't work as well. You know, there isn't the same charm to GLaDOS's voice, and there isn't the same, like, raw, raw, sparkly, acidic, satirical comedy. to these particular announcements. They could have gone... You see, look, see the red... <laughs> all of the red recontextualizes paint. It's not blood. It was all in your mind all along, which is exactly the theme of the game. But I just... I do think it's... I do think that if they had um, relied on the dream logic as being the center of the humor... Like, it's so delightful whenever you whenever you do something and it does something you don't expect, you know? it's. I find myself laughing just with sheer joy at 
realizing I can pull the moon out of the sky. Like the game constantly tricking you is the real humor of it. And that works so well, it's only kind of brought down by the attempt to ape portal. New cube design. I'm a pirate, eggshell, and then a, I think those are hexadecimal codes for color. Materials, aluminium, cloud insert, balsa wood, portal prototype, banana, yellow. Yeah, okay, fair enough. This is all just details on the development of this weird brain situation I'm experiencing. An avocado. Thanks. Promotes heart health, anti-cancer, blood sugar regulation, potassium, anti-inflammatory, need to sleep, but why? Too many. How many, really? Cloning? Biggest question. Which one is the real one? Order longer, freezer, flaps. Self-doubt, worthlessness. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The passive-aggressive robot voice doesn't really fit what they're doing here. However, the... the the reassuring doctor with undertones of kind of like panic and passive aggression and condescension. I think condescension is the most important part of that of that voice performance. That's a good joke in and of itself. Like that joke fits what they're doing in this in this game way better than the the attempt to do a GLaDOS. And I know that we all want to do GLaDOS, but that's not really the purpose of this game now, is it? Oh, I got two sodas this time. I, uh, green soda again in the bin. I don't like green. This one looks nice though. Let me take my soda with me. Well, I think that the I think that the robotic voice is supposed to be kind of riffing on those. Um, you know those medical TV ads you get in the United States because the United States is terrible and it's completely absurd that you might be required to uh, have advertisements for medicine and because, you know, well, let's not get into why the American healthcare system is fucking awful, but for now, let's just continue to solve puzzles. But yeah, I think that it's, I think that it's in attempting to riff on the way that those, uh, those ads have like a pleasant but almost robotic female voice telling you about all the horrible side effects that will happen. Ooh. Ooh, music. Ah, oh, this was nice and jaunty. This makes me think of, like, Birmingham in the 1920s and a fun cartoon character bouncing around. Why Birmingham? I don't know. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay, that's new. I definitely remember this puzzle. Well, not this puzzle, but this section. So they've introduced the next mechanic here, which is that instead of being able to pick things up and recontextualize them, you can create shrinking clones of a thing, which is what was announced on the whiteboard at the entryway to this area, but is itself um, a new mechanic. Attention, Dr. Pierce requires you to note the following risks of dream overexposure. Significant memory loss, both quantitative and qualitative. Hallucinations of dreaded or annoying objects. Unrealistic beliefs about the lengths of hallways. And other side effects which have not yet been discovered or which cannot be understood. All of my beliefs about the size of hallways are completely legitimate and justified, actually, I think I'll, I think I'll have you know. I've never had an unjustified belief about a hallway in my life and I don't intend to start now and I really wish these beeping things would stop. A, smile a smiley face? My curse has become a smiley face! That's nice, I guess. <laughs> we have provided this complimentary smiley face, as you may be feeling stressed out in these times of uncertainty. However, we've now taken it away again. Yeah, this is... This is puzzle time. So I need to get this off of the switch, I guess. Somehow. Oh, <laughs> well, that was easy. I love to solve puzzles by, uh, by accident. It, excuse me? My God, it's everywhere.
ah, this one. This was the one that really got me stuck. I remember when I was playing this last. This was the point at which I lost my goddamn mind because I could not figure out how to solve this puzzle. Eventually someone in the chat just told me how to solve it. Which is really funny considering I just accidentally solved it. Like, without even trying. Well. <laughs> sucks to be- sucks to be six months ago past me. I guess she was a fucking moron because that was just Warning. dunzo. Dr. Pierce is frantically submitting numerous spelling and grammar mistakes into the standard orientation protocol in a desperate attempt to counsel you. I have no subroutine to correct these errors, but I cannot compromise the integrity of the standard orientation protocol. You will not receive these messages. They would not make sense regardless. But... But I love messages. Receiving messages is like my favourite thing in the world. Nobody ever gives me messages. Well, not quite enough height. Oops. That must be enough. Something else that this reminds me of is actually um, classic hospital management game. Uh, what the fuck is it called? It's not Hospital Tycoon. Um, theme Hospital. This reminds me a lot of Theme Hospital. Something about, um, you know, takes on, on healthcare and the, the voice acting of the doctors, the voice acting in that game is all English because it was it was a Lionhead Studios, no it wasn't, it was Bullfrog, the precursor to Lionhead um, game and they were a British developer, but uh, this feels like an American take on the same kind of feel. New cube, we've seen that cube and we've seen the, we've seen half of this before I think. It looks like projections might be the mechanic for the next area maybe. Attention. Dr. Pierce continues to input significant errors. I will interpret his basic ideas. Hello, my introductions are redundant. I am a real doctor who went to doctor school. VR has never been a mistake. I can help you, but I also do not know how. Transmission ends. If he doesn't know how he can help me, then surely that means he can't help me. Just, you know, in terms of the words mean, logically speaking. Oh, I do love to have I do love to have the soda machine. Hello. Name is my Pierce Dr. Glenn. To the Somnusculpt Welcome Experience, team of your care leader patient years 10 development. Conditions struggle you whatever with? Professional invention. Edge science with cutting, a tomorrow can bright. And buts, no ifs or look good. This is what it's like whenever I have auditory processing disorder problems from the autism. Uh, excuse me? I, I'd like my... thank you. This is my machine, it's not for someone else. What if I forget to set the alarm? Beep, 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 emergency exit protocol. Oh, I hate elevators. Every time I enter an elevator, I'm intimately aware of the... Just the fact that I'm locked inside a tiny metal box and if it decides not to let me out, it won't let me out and I can't get out and I don't like it and then I can't breathe. I did actually get stuck in an elevator a few times when I was a kid. Relaxation room. That sounds like what I need right now. Everyone knows blue is the most relaxing colour. Green, however, is not a creative colour. About us, our mission, etc. Can I sit down? Let's give me a crouch button so I can simulate sitting in a chair. This moves way too fast to be relaxing. I don't know if you've ever tried to relax, but that ain't how it works. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. This is a notification that you have reappeared on our monitoring system after a prolonged absence. 
please continue to do whatever you did most recently and discontinue whatever you were doing immediately prior to that. Why? I've only ever continued to do whatever I was doing most recently. I've never not had to discontinue not doing the thing I wasn't already doing previously before I started doing that. I bet that's just a dream. I bet it's not real. I bet I'm not really on my way out. They've got, they've got far too many more fiendish puzzles for me to... Oh, okay. Did I just... <gasps> I brought a physical object through one of these wiggly barriers. I'm not supposed to be able to do that. Can I have another one? I want to test this. Give me soda. I need it for science. Well, this seems like more of the same. If I make this big enough, I can live in it. Just like in real life. Green soda is the best soda. It's my favorite. No, what? My soda! Is this because I didn't put money in? Who needs money in dreams? I just want my dream soda. Okay, can I make myself smaller? Is that what's going to happen now? Must be. Oh. So if I make the house smaller and go through the door, will I be smaller? Oh, hang on, if I make the house huge. Now I'm tiny! Oh, yeah, fantastic. So this is what I'm saying about the way they constantly introduce new mechanics or new ways to use the mechanics they've already established. It all plays on this theme of recontextualization, but it is also very much uh, very playful. I think I think the fundamental nature of this game is playfulness. Uh, oh, no message on this one. Well, see, things seem to be breaking down a bit further. I'd love to journey to the center of my con subconscious. That's not a fucked up place to be at all. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. In addition to continuing and discontinuing as mentioned earlier, please also disregard any unsettling experiences that you may have recently had. Everything should have now reverted to being soothing and therapeutic. If this is not the case, you may be receiving this message in error. But I don't like things that are soothing and therapeutic. I like things that are fucked up and weird. Hmm, let's see. What have we got in the next puzzle? I wonder if it's gonna... Can I just... I don't remember this. This might actually be time for new puzzles. I don't think I've got this far before. I don't think we made it this far when I was playing previously. Because I definitely don't remember this room and what is clearly a game of Jenga. It sounds like a, an air compressor or something. Oh, it's a fan. Well, I think I know how to solve this problem. Nice that we've finally gotten into the new puzzles since it decided to delete my save or reset me to way earlier than it did previously. Hmm, window, windows, windows one, two, three, point five, windows point five? I knew it. Exactly. We all love to be fucked up and weird. Anyway, for anyone who's watching and doesn't know already, I have a YouTube channel where I uh, do in-depth Let's Plays. I'll be starting on Monday a Let's Play of Mist, the original, well, no, not quite the original version. It's actually Mist Masterpiece Edition, which is from like 1999 or something, but it um, is mostly, mostly the original game. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. And I'd like to read you my favorite inspirational quote by me. The worst thing you can do is focus on negativity. It won't spare you from the cage of death, the pain of disease, the cruelty of time, the cold shell of human nature, or the eventual loss of everything you've ever held dear. Whatever you do, don't focus on that. 
cool, I won't. But yeah, so go go check that out if you if you don't know about that already and drop me a follow there or a follow here or both, ideally. If you like what I do. That's enough shilling for one moment. <gasps> bouncy castle. Oh, I haven't played on a bouncy castle since I was That's not the noise they're no that they're supposed to make, I don't believe. <laughs> I haven't played on a bouncy castle since I was a small child. They were my favourite things in the world, and I don't really know why. I believe it must have something to do with um, the vestibular system. Because really, I found way too much joy in bouncing around on big bouncy things than was entirely seemly or sensible. Not quite big enough. Let's try that. Not quite big enough. That's smaller. How do I make you be big enough? Come on. Oh no, that's not going to help, is it? Maybe I need to make it that big, but already be standing up on the top of the edge. I bet that's the solution. Looks like it'll do it. Just about made it. Okay, fantastic. Oh, I'm small again. I love to be tiny. The most happiest thing in the world is when you are nothing but a, you know, a, a tiny little mouse of a person just going, oh no, oh dear, oh no. I don't, I can't fit through there. <laughs> I don't think that actually helps me. Oh, I can bring it up here, though. Huh. What happens if I do that? Oh, if I turn this around, I can go back through the same door. Uh, my computer just made a beeble doop noise that means it's disconnected something, so... Uh, if someone could let me know whether or not they can actually still hear me talking, that would be useful to me personally. Because if my microphone has disconnected, then nobody will be able to hear me. Okay, great. That's fine then. Not a problem at all. It was probably my headset disconnecting and reconnecting, which it seems to like to do for some reason. I have no idea why. Maybe it just makes it happy. I mean, I'm not a headset. Maybe that's the thing they find most fulfilling in life. To periodically reset their connection to the Windows uh, USB network. Alright, what have you got to say now, you cond condescending bastard? Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to thank you for triggering every single one of our 800... 23 emergency protocols. This will assist us greatly in improving the system for future patients. Congratulations. Anyway, you're now headed in the right direction and we should be able to initiate the emergency exit protocol shortly. I think cunt is like, will I get banned from, do you get banned from Twitch if you say cunt? Uh, anyway, I should I should try and think of some kind of an a a of acronym. Condescending, unbearable. Uh, what's a good word that starts with N? Condescending, unbearable, something, twat. That seems. Uh. Oh, okay. If I go through a small one, it will make me be big. So if I make myself big enough, I can eventually see what's in that hole. <laughs> it is genuinely a work of genius, if you ask me, the way that they constantly recontextualize the stuff. It's just such a clever idea, and they but the impressive thing about it is that they iterate on it to such a large degree. There's just always more and more ways to do stuff with these particular mechanics. If I make this teeny tiny, I can put it in here. I can. Oh. 
Nearly dropped it and lost it. <sighs> Am I just really good at solving puzzles now? Did something happen to me when I had COVID that made me smarter? Because I know that, like, if you are on YouTube and you say, like, fuck or shit or whatever in the in the opening of a of a video, you get censored in some way. Oh, do I have to walk all this way? That's going to take fucking forever. If they did not anticipate people having to... Okay, that's fine then. I'm glad I thought to click on that instead of spend 15 minutes walking all the way across there. Although I do actually kind of want to know what's over there. I should have been more careful with the, the thingamajigs. And it looks like I'm going to have to crawl this way over here anyway as well anyway. Dear, oh dear. Do, 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 do. Actually, you know, for a game that is kind of elevator music personified, this is this is the aesthetic of elevator music. It's weird that they don't actually ever play any when you're in the elevator. Five or six dreams is the absolute limit. Bullshit. I've had more than five or six dreams in one night sometimes. You're not the boss of me. Let me see if I can reach these buttons. Hup. Flashbacks to being eight. Ooh, wiggly. I think there was a loading screen in the first part of the game where it, it loads in, but the room you're in is identical to the loading screen, so and it's not until you start moving that you realise you can actually walk past the loading screen, which is such a clever joke. It's so good. Whoever's responsible for the physical humor of this game is an absolute Emergency genius. Exit protocol initiated. Please prepare to conclude your Somnasculpt experience in 10, 9, 8. Error. Error logged by. Orientation protocol. Stand by for analysis. I've literally had like four layer deep waking dreams. You know the, you know the dreams where you wake up, but you, you're still in the dream when you wake up? I've had like four layers deep of that in the past. And I've had other dreams that night, so it must be possible. All right, I'm going to pause for just literally one minute to grab some more water from the kitchen and then I'll be right back. And here I am, having returned. I do wonder what if anyone has ever done any like kind of error analysis complete. You are exhibiting signs consistent with an increase in fear, hopelessness, and frustration. This is inconceivable, as somnasculpt therapy is proven to correlate with a decrease in these emotions. I mean, that's an attitude I definitely heard before. It seems like some of the sort of like testing area components seem to be starting to spread out into this interstitial realm. And actually, now that I think about it, this is another liminal state, isn't it? The the back rooms, the corridors between. Hypothesis: Patient was improperly oriented. Conclusion: Impossible. Reformulating. What am I dreaming upside down? Improved hypothesis. Patient requires additional somnasculpt therapy. Conclusion. Emergency exit protocol cannot proceed. Emergency exit protocol has been emergency destroyed. I don't know about you, but... Instruction. Continue with somnasculpt therapy indefinitely on an independent basis, as all orientation resources have been exhausted. 
This concludes your standard orientation protocol. Goodbye. Okay. Oh. Wow. Didn't even give me time to put on a little makeup. Right. Apparently this game is only about three hours long, so I don't know how much more of it there is left. But I was definitely talking about something and I have no idea what it was. I've had dreams like this as well. There's actually... I think there's a similarity between this game and... Um, the... Uh, like... 90s internet simulator of... Um, Hypnospace Outlaw. And not just because they both take place in dreams. But um, I think... Oh, uh. oh, I'm sideways. I, wa I was improperly oriented. Oh my god, the computer voice was right. Well, I guess what I've learned is that I should always trust computer voices tell me, telling me that I'm improperly orientated. Are you lucid dreaming? Please head to the exit to wake up. If I was lucid dreaming, I'd be able to just make an exit. That's what it means. It's a whole crate of green soda and what I'm going to assume are little bits of carrot. Wow. Carrot slices and green soda. Truly, truly lovely. But yeah, so I, I do appreciate how much they've committed to the concept of liminal spaces because we have... Oh, I see where we're going with this. <laughs> uh, because we have, you know, empty office spaces. We have back rooms of industrial spaces, you know, anyone who's ever worked a retail job has had the experience of, well, walking through, oh, okay, walking through a, um, you know, just the back rooms to get to the break room or whatever, and it's got a really particular vibe. Oh. There we go. Perception is reality, hmm. Definitely never heard that before. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. Thank you for completing the Somnisculpt Standard Orientation Protocol. Before you begin the first phase of therapy, I'd like to briefly describe the finite and fragile nature of the dream state. Is that it? Okay. Let's see something else if I click it again. No, okay. One chance, and one chance only, to understand the uh, mildly condescending ravings of Doctor Whoever the Fuck. Doctor James Somebody. Doctor Alan This Guy. Blech. That's never gonna not be disorientating, I'm gonna say that much right now. Will my soda fall? <laughs> yes it will, fantastic. It's not drinkable. No, it broke open. My soda. My lasagna. Well, I guess I'm stuck down here now. Is it going to reorientate at some point, or... Am I stuck? This is going to be that moon puzzle all over again. <laughs> Wait, hang on, I should have tried to climb up through that door. Oh well. Maybe there was a secret in there. I love secrets. Every gamer is trained to search for secrets from childhood. This is what people don't realise about gamers as a as a community. You can never hide anything from them. Yonic. Of course, nothing is more challenging than the difficulty of changing perspective of fundamentally altering your perceptions in a way that will enable you to face dire trial-by-fire scenarios with solutions that could not be found otherwise. I mean, you say that, but how often do we really face trial-by-fire? In this day and age, it's much more likely to be trial-by-slow starvation because you couldn't get a fucking job. Let's get this one to be real. Let's see if I can make that pop into existence. If that's a red herring and it doesn't become a block that I can use to do stuff, I'm going to be salty. I think I nearly had it then. Uh! 
<laughs> every time, every time it gets me, every single time. How many tricks? How many more tricks are you gonna pull, game? J At least one more, clearly. God, who, who designed this? This fucking work of absolute genius. What an absolute delight this game is. I'll have to remember, did someone buy this for me? I think my friend Jolene bought this for me, so I'm gonna, definitely gonna need to hit her up and be like, yo, thank you, because this thing is fucking great. Deeply, deeply charming video game. Which way even am I supposed to go now? Hall two. Can I not just... I bet there's something to do with this that's the puzzle. Maybe it'll keep ticking for the number of halls. Hall one. Oh, it's turned it around. Okay. Perception is not reality. Hall one. Definitely wants me to go this way this time. You know, I straight up thought I would be walking through that wall right now. I thought that was going to be what the the puzzle or the joke was. I've, I've been outsmarted again and tricked into slamming my head into a brick wall. Again. I'm making a habit of it at this point. Oh, hang on. What if I just walk backward? No, okay. I've been doing good progress. I haven't been stuck on a puzzle so far since that, since that first one with the moon. Which is generally pretty good going for me. I have... <laughs> I've always been terrible at these kinds of games. My partner absolutely loves them. She keeps saying that I should play um, play this one about like color changing. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, did that do something? Um, that's a big like almost open world thing with all these puzzles you can solve. But I I I don't do it good. I don't make my brain work the right way for that kind of puzzles. Okay, well they say that repeating the same action over and over and expecting a different result is the definition of madness. What was if I... Did that... Did that change something? Maybe I just go the whole way backwards. That's the only thing I seem to be able to do at the moment. Alright, maybe I am stumped again. It's definitely pointing this way, but... It only seems to let me go the other way. So it's definitely something to do with this this space, right? But I can't walk through this wall, and I can't back through this wall. And I don't see anything interactable. I don't see any clickable objects that do anything. I mean, that noise traditionally means no, you did it wrong. I don't know how familiar anyone is with noises that mean you did stuff wrong, but there is one, and it's that one. That is the you fucked up noise. The universal human you fucked up noise is eh. Oh, it's switched back again. Is there a logic to what makes it switch? That's no. That's no. What happens if I just go this way without looking? Nope, that's not it either. Feel free to chime in anytime if you <laughs> if you have advice for this one because uh, I'm getting stuck again. It's been like an hour since I got stuck. Open the door. Reveal unto me your secrets. Alright, that was the positive noise. Perception is reality. Perception is not reality. No trespassing. Stopped it. What? Can I just walk through these? No. Hmm. Is there something in the bin? Can I go in the bin? No. I should go in the bin. I deserve to be in the bin. Anyone stuck on this puzzle deserves to go in the bin. It's definitely pointing this way. I can't 
change my perception? So that's clearly not the answer. I can't move any of these things. So that's clearly not the answer. It must be about a point of view, right? Because its perception is not reality. But I can't find any other... Hmm. I'm starting to become irritated. Jump through it? Nope. Can I hop? Nope. Ah! <laughs> My brain! Hmm. I'll wait until it goes ping again. There we go. So the ping is hall zero two. It definitely is pointing that way. Is there something in here? Can I walk up this? No. Oh, is it timing paste? I didn't go through the thing and it went ank. If I just hang around, will it will it go ank again? <gasps> if I stand over here, will it just will it if I just stand here, will it eventually change, maybe? Maybe it's not to do with going through the doorway at all. Or maybe doing something else is what's triggering it going ank. Or ping and changing. Doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. Because that currently has. Yeah, but if it but it just changing doesn't necessarily help me. Oh, it didn't make a noise that time. See, it went. It made the noise that time, but it hasn't. Doesn't seem to have changed anything apart from the side, maybe. <sighs> the first direction I'm looking at is always. Oh, so whichever way I look first is walled off. So if I go, if I look this way, it's walled off, and I look that way, it's got the exit. That was the way that the. the, the exit sign was already saying, so if I look that way, and then just back up, maybe? But that's the same again. Oh! It pinged. It pinged. If I walk backwards through it, does it ping? Is that what it is? Nope, that ain't it. But that's changed and become dark. So I think you're right that, you know, the wall... the which direction is blocked off changing is the key to this puzzle. But what I can't figure out is how to make it change while I'm standing behind it, right? Wait, it said zero three that time. See, because that didn't change. It didn't change that time, so. Maybe if I'm just careful to wait for it to make a noise and then next time if it pings, I'll, I'll backtrack. Definitely pinged. I need to look at the sign. Okay. Hall one pointing left. Right? Oh, no, okay, I get what you mean, right? So... It's saying that that way is the way I need to go. And then pick the wrong direction to make it walled off. I think you've cracked it. Yeah, I think you've got it. Oh, you're cleverer than me. Congratulations, Wutsukruv. You are a fucking genius and you have solved this puzzle for me. Fantastic. Well done. Well done indeed. You've 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 done it. You've saved my bacon. I shall declare you my hero. I guess bake you a cake or something? Oh, oh it's gone. Okay, bye. That one's got a smiley face on it. I don't trust that. I love the design of this room, though. Archetypical watery objects. I think I've been to a swimming pool that looked like this once. 
in aesthetic, not in giant cubes of water, obviously. Finally, while we respect the unique progress of every patient, you must understand that it is possible to completely exhaust your supply of dreams, thereby entering a state in which you will not be able to wake up, even with the help of triggering mechanisms. This seems fine, though. What if I just... Uh, 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 okay. That seems fine, though. Like, who cares if I end up sleeping in this dreamscape forever? It's a videoed game. I like the videoed games. I like to solving the puzzles. Ah ha ha ha. Oh, I've done this one before. It, okay, well, I haven't done that before. Elevator. Doorway. More like Snorway. And other memes from 2004. Excuse me, do you mind not getting me stuck? Thank you. This makes me think of the bedroom from the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Guys, I think I may have gone a bit too deep into my dream. I think maybe things have stopped making sense. <laughs> oh, this is a maze. I don't like mazes. I don't find them amazing. So I need to try and find my way back to- oh, aha, okay, this way. Maybe I should have maybe I should have carried that little portrait with me so that I could have used it to mark my passage in some way. All right, following arrows seems to be the answer here. I don't know if you've ever been in a maze and followed arrows, but you know, sometimes people leave those there to trick you. There's absolutely hedge mazes where people have chalked arrows in the wrong direction just to fuck with people. Although, they do say that the way to get through a maze is to just follow one wall. But that maze doesn't have any walls. It's all hyper cuby. Please listen carefully for the sound of an alarm clock, which will automatically play if you are approaching a destabilizing dream weight. We all we all we all have bad dreams sometimes. That's completely not Okay. Every time, every single time, I'm gonna fall for it. <laughs> this game is just gonna keep tricking me. Oh, I've been here. This is in, like, Iowa. I, I mean, I've never actually been to Iowa, but this is, like... Oh, that's... Oh, okay. That one, that one ain't real. Oh, it's all not real. Wow, this is holodecky. I feel like this game is gaslighting me, but in a nice way, in a fun, in a fun way. Gaslight gatekeep girl boss, but like on a journey to the center of the mind. Okay, it's recontact. Uh, okay, so I just had to make the walls appear to make the thing do the thing that lets me do the stuff that does the thing. It's going to be to find the hidden alarm clock again, isn't it? Oh, well, that's not exactly hidden. Ooh. I'm so good at this game. Never, I've never loaded something for 1,000% before. You, you wouldn't think you could go above 100. I am, a, I am, a, I am 10 times better than the average, than the average load screen. And all I had to do was click on it. I'm amazing at this. This is highly unusual. It appears you have entered the Sonascult Diagnostic Framework. Patients do not have access to this dream. Okay, so I'm going to guess that uh, Paradoxes is going to be the, the mechanic for this next sequence. 
Reminder, call Jungles Management. Music too dang loud. Scent of burnt curry. Shipments of food coming here. Don't have space for more. Ask if they can hand out flyers for testing. Also ask Rysan Medical for increased canister order frequency. Fair enough. Maybe it's maybe it's not Jungles Management. This is about dreams, right? Maybe it's Jungles. As we all know, Carl Jung, the father of dream analysis, is one of the most important psychotherapist figures in, in the history of that stuff I was just saying. <laughs> Conception. See, that's a good pun. See, they're so much funnier when they don't gild the lily with the voice acting and just and just have environmental jokes. I need to find some kind of a doorway. I bet there's a rectangular, uh, an L-shaped piece I need to fit in there that I need to find somehow. Oh, they were saying the music was too loud, right? I don't know what that is, but it reminds me a lot of M1M1, uh, M1A1 from... Uh... That was a concerning noise. From Doom. Diagnostic warning. Unrealistic use of dream objects may result in dream integrity fail states. states, states. Why would using dream objects unrealistically make your dream fail? Like, have you ever had dreams about things? Dreams ain't realistic. Okay, so I need to figure out where I can point that to get through something I couldn't previously, I think. That's not going to help. Hmm. So I, I think I need to try and get through this wall somehow. Um, that's not helping. Maybe I could shrink myself again. <laughs> the things this game makes you say. Would that help? I bet it wouldn't help. I'm teeny tiny. I love being small. Time to jump in the bin where I belong. <laughs> now I'm comfortable amongst the rest of the garbage. Hop. I'm recyclable. Okay, actually being tiny does... I don't think that they would give you the opportunity to be tiny if they didn't want you to be tiny at some point. Just logically speaking. But... How do I... Oh, but if I... If I put that down where it's supposed to be. And try going through he here. And that'll take me... Aha! To Jungle's Bistro. Which is where the music is apparently coming from. Have I got the size wrong? Is that what's up? How do I get in there? How do I get inside you? My noisy friend. Diagnostic warning. warning. Paradox prevention protocols may not be fully implemented. Implemented. Oh, I have to make a paradox, I guess. How do I make a paradox? And today, as a special guest on the stream, we're going to have the CEO of Paradox Entertainment to how, tell us how to make a paradox. Well, you see, you just take a shit ton of investor money and start publishing pretty good games, but also develop a really racist fan base. That's the trick. Um, you know, just a passing sideswipe at um, a paradox, because why not? What's this? Why is there a little like plug section there? Hmm. What did it say about music too loud, burnt curry, don't have space for more? I can't get in, that's like, I can't get inside it. But being down here has to be a part of this, right? I feel like if I was supposed to fit this back into its correct position, it would in some way like lock in the way it has previously with those puzzles. Hmm. What am I missing? Diagnostic warning. warning. Paradox prevention protocols may not be fully implemented. Implemented. 
So it can't prevent a paradox, but what even is a paradox in this context? What if I make this big now? Oh, now I don't have a way back out. Hmm. Can I make this close? Can I jump down to it or something? Oops. Well, that wasn't what I meant to do. Why was if I jump through it and come through at a different angle? I don't think that's going to help me solve the puzzle, but I'm super curious. <laughs> so I need to put it up here first so that I can get up there. And then if I recontextualize it vertically, I should be able to drop right through the, the door hole. Which is... I don't, you know, I've never called it a door hole before, but it feels uncomfortable. Go on, off you go. Drop down. Diagnostic warning. warning. Paradox prevention protocols may not be fully implemented. I don't think it's supposed to. There we go. Alright, now what happens? Absolutely fucking nothing. It just inverts me correctly. Hmm. I would perhaps like not to be tiny forever. Being tiny does not suit me personally. How the hell do I make it a paradox? I feel like it must be related to that in some way, right? Oh hey, I'm a different height than I was previously here. Even though I came through this doorway. Hmm. What if I make myself really big? Oh! Oh! What, like this? I guess that would be a paradox, huh? You guys are so much better at this than I am. Why do I make it big again? Um... Diagnostic warning. warning. Paradox prevention protocols may not be fully Oop. implemented. Implemented. Please paradox from creating any refrains. Explosive dream overload. overload. May result. Oh, I tried to take it through its own door. That's what. That makes sense. It's probably not meant to, but this music actually slaps. I really like this. Save me computer. No! A classic beige box computer, and it's gone. To be honest, if I went into my own subconscious as far as I could possibly, impossibly deep, and, and started fucking up my own brain, I probably would revert to just seeing beige box computers everywhere. You ever seen any of those anime characters that's just like a robot with a head, the head of like a beige box computer? That is me. I keep, actually, I keep meaning to commit to the gimmick that I'm some kind of a robot, and every time I forget. But I, I, uh, I'm just gonna keep bringing it up from time to time, I guess. Ooh, pretty. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. This is cool. This is nice. This is not an exit. The irritating music from next door was, <laughs> was, um... Really distracting. I thought for sure that meant there was that it had something to do with the puzzle. My god, we've reached the basic level of the consciousness. The two basic conceptions. Black, white, and rectangle. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. And many years ago, I had a dream. I found myself in a place where I understood that each of us begins as nothing. Where everything I perceived was shaped by seeing it exactly the way I wanted to. White space. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. Many years ago I had a dream. It was a terrible time and I never did it again. With my help, you too can never dream ever again. Remember, give up on your dreams. I don't think I've been in Scotland long enough to do a Scots accent. Don't want to get, um... 
you know, quietly beaten to death at the next English people living in Scotland meeting, which would be entirely understandable and justified, frankly. Actually, someone once told me off for making a joke that implied the Scots were uh, angry and violent, which was not actually the the joke I had made and didn't even occur to me was an interpretation of what I said. I've just realised that I've accidentally done another one of those, and so I will I will actually just undercut that with the with the opportunity to to point out that um, the Scots are lovely people and 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 are not violent at all. Can I bring this box with me? I bet I can't. Is there an alarm clock here somewhere? What am I? What am I missing? The weirdest thing is that having lived in Scotland this long, I I, I start finding myself saying Scots things without realizing, just because everyone around me is you know speaking Scots all of the time. I say living with a Danish person and an Italian, but everybody else I meet is speaking Scots. I do love the rain. Generally speaking, in life, I absolutely love the rain, even when I'm in a conceptual brain space where it rains upwards and downwards at the same time. Erase me. Relaxiat. Minerals. Female toads. <laughs> this is my subconscious. These are the things I'm thinking about all of the time. You have no idea how much I think about female toads. My mouse went weird. This is apparently also not an exit. Which makes sense, because it's a rectangular box. A standard video game's crate. In fact, the standard video game's crate is itself an iconic object, if you ask me. I don't think climbing this has anything to do with solving whatever the puzzle in this room is. I just It helps me think to be high up. I've played so much Dishonored over the years, I've just gotten used to climbing onto my thinking shelf. So they can have a bit of a ponder out of the way of, you know, passing gunmen. Not an exit. Can't interact with any of these things. Can I go through this? I bet I can go through this. Ha ha! I can't see shit. <laughs> There we go, okay. Now I have a point of reference, which is all you ever really need. Oh boy, I really regret saying all of that stuff about... Well. Oh well, water under the bridge, let's move on. It's not like anyone watches the, the archives of these anyway. Is this one stuck? Nope. Is this the same place I came back in? Or no? Nope. Okay, this is different. Oh, no, wait, no, hang on. This is like, this is the same side where I came in. So I can go left or I can go right. Seems like another one of those perception puzzles. This window must be important. Oh, can I just walk straight through the window? Did, did I try that? Haha, -ha, walls are a fake idea. Windows, however, are extremely real and can hurt you. <laughs> As anyone who's ever tried to use Microsoft software will know. But in white space, I also face the greatest challenge I could imagine. Because with a lifetime of life itself behind me, and all of the weight that it carried, I realized that seeing things the way I wanted to was not as easy as it used to be. So what you're telling me is that this therapeutic mechanism you developed broke your own brain, and you decided that that was still a good idea to use it on other people. 
Interesting. That does sound like the behaviour of a doctor, if you ask me. Ooh, shipping containers. Another archetypical object, but one that is not... One that has not shown up in, like... I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this less than the sort of like hotel back rooms that we saw previously. Those are very entertaining. A better vibe than this like divine creation space. Hmm. How do I how do I how do I go up there? How do I how do I climb up the stairs? I think it's clever the way that all of the perceptual puzzles are based not on actually changing things, well not, on, not always on actually changing things, but on, on the way that the level is built. It is actually usually about sight lines rather than being about teleporting the player without them noticing. Oh, oh, aha, okay. Provided I let it contain my vision completely. Okay. Huh, interesting. This is reminding me of some of a puzzle game on the Nintendo D Again? That's like the fifth time they pulled that trick. A puzzle game on the Nintendo DS, the name of which I cannot remember, but which was about rotating pathways in 3D space in order to create, um, in order to like, well, make pathways so that you could cross things. Can I see anything through these windows? I bet I can't. Time to bunny hop. Bunny hopping is one of the most important skills in video games, even in games that don't have bunny hopping as a functional thing. That's where I, is that where I fell in? That must be where I fell in. Um, yellow and red, blue and red. Okay, so what happens if we go through this way? Yellow and red. Yellow and red again, perhaps? Yeah, okay, so that's that's not doing anything. Blue and red takes us also to bl blue and red, I suppose. I'm not figuring this one out. <laughs> Can I pass through the wall? It doesn't look like it. Something with the floor, maybe? Doesn't look like it either. Red on opposite corners, and then different colours on the other co Oh! Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. I can walk back through this space. Can I go around the sides? Aha! It is also really entertaining to me how many of these puzzles are solvable by accident. Oh, I remember this. This is from Near Automata. A game I have controversial opinions about. You're well beyond dreaming now, and further out than anyone has ever come back from. But we hope that you won't get discouraged. After all, if this is a place of pure perspective, isn't it also a place where a different point of view could make anything possible. Isn't that why you came here? You've gone so deep that you may be lost forever. However, bear in mind you are still a useful, very, very valuable test subject. Why don't you see what happens if you destroy your own brain? This game sure does love its chess metaphor. Ooh, oh, okay. I guess this is, excuse me, going to have some kind of polarization puzzle then. That's trippy. That's really cool and very interesting. Ooh, that's weird. If I put that... Whoop. Okay, so it can go on the physical surface, but I can't. 
Maybe if I put it on there it turns real. Ah, that's what it is. Okay. Well, that's an easy enough puzzle to solve. I can just use these to leapfrog my way across, right? Well, I mean, not if I do that, obviously. Oopsie whoopsie. This is the equivalent of sawing through the branch. You'll oh, I did it again. Folks, I might keep making this mistake. Okay. We wait until we're on the second one before we move the first one. We put it on the third one and then we... Oh, don't grab it! <laughs> don't grab it, don't grab it. We move this and then we move. And then we move this, and then we move. Do not fucking click that, oh my god. Don't do it, don't, nope. <sighs> Think we're all right. <laughs> if I drop through another hole right before this door, I'm going to be mildly frustrated. Well, that door doesn't help me very much. I can't make this big enough for me to get up there, can I? I can get up here. And I can shrink it from underneath me. That doesn't help, though. I definitely need to get another brick from somewhere. If I was a giant conceptual brain brick, where would I be hi hiding? Is that touching the wall? Apparently. Can I go inside the brick? No, it doesn't look like it. Hmm. This one might be troublesome again. Quite big enough. And that's definitely not tall enough. What happens if I just hide the door? Absolutely nothing. Attempting to crush myself has also proved fruitless. Spinny, spinny, spinny. That's no good. What happens if I try and carry this through the doorway? <laughs> Nothing. Can't go through. <gasps> oh, it can go through. Interesting, but I can't. Oh, that made it real. Okay. Interesting. Okay, well, I solved that one eventually. I think the solution to this one's a bit cheesy, though. Especially think of the 1960s. Trippy op art walls. Oh, I don't like to look at this. That's actually quite unpleasant. Do not appreciate the infinite fractal hallways. responds to what I'm doing, though. Makes me think of, like, BSD errors in the old, um... Doom engine? Whoop. That's the backside of a clock, if ever I saw one. Oh, jeez, I'm gonna be late for work. Is that it? Did I reach the center of my own brain? Have I descended to the lowest level of my mind? What exactly is my limbic system? Perhaps the lizard brain would like to chime in. I think this guy probably has trauma about alarm clocks. Oh, 
Well, is there a door up there? Oh no, that's just reflections. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and by now, you may have realized that all of this has happened exactly the way it was supposed to. You see, everyone who comes to the Institute does so because they feel that they are no longer in control of something important to them. Actually, we failed on purpose is kind of an extremely powerful bullshit move. But, more often than not, the problem is not that the problems we face can't be solved. The problem is that we become so afraid of failure that we refuse to see our problems from a new perspective. And so, we do the same things again and again and again. And therein, of course, we find exactly the failure we were looking for. I can understand the sentiment, but ultimately I think it's kind of wishy-washy. A lot of people actually have problems that are not solvable. It's always been my resistance to mindfulness as a concept. It's the, that it kind of like boils down to simply think your way out of your in, inextractable problems. But then maybe I'm just a grim person. Your life will always be a struggle, and you will always have problems. But today, you have the chance to see things differently. Even though it meant facing obstacles that seemed impossible at first, you thought outside the box, and you overcame them. Because you saw things from every angle, you understood them for what they really were. Because you kept moving forward, no matter how far off the path you were told you were headed, or how unexpected it became, you found your way. I mean, I, I'm being critical, but uh, I do actually feel very proud of myself for solving these puzzles, which I suppose is the effect it's supposed to have. I only got stuck, what, twice? Three times? So I feel like a proper clever clogs now. Maybe my, maybe my problems are soluble. Maybe all I need to do is recontextualize a chess piece. In a few minutes, you'll be back in the real world. And some part of you will say that none of this was real. So how could it have really meant anything? But just like the power of perspective itself, it will have been as real as you believed it to be. All you've got to do is wait. What a delightful little game. That was actually really fun. Really clever puzzles, really clever mechanics. Very good um, physical humour, whenever it wasn't belabouring its point with, with dialogue. Oh yeah, lo-fi hip-hop, the meme music. I think I'll let the credits roll, as I always like to do that. I hope you enjoyed seeing this game, which was delightful and pretty cool. I think it's a shame that the um, mid-90s multimedia vibe was not maintained the whole way through. It was really only the early area that had that kind of feel. Again, with the archetypical objects, chess pieces and and dice and and flower pots these these kind of like classic cg render objects in spite of myself this has got me wiggling just just doing a little chair dance you know vibing away to the music it feels like a bit rich to talk about themes with a game that's only three hours long and is primarily about solving uh perspective puzzles but I think that this, I think that the the presence of such a positive theme is ultimately helpful, and I think it's potentially even more helpful than normal than I would normally consider such a thing because there is a tendency for these kinds of themes to be fundamentally empty. It's just someone telling you that your problems aren't real, which is not the same thing as showing the, you that you're able to solve problems, even if the problems that you're solving 
are ultimately facile video game problems because the ability to recontextualize an object within 3D space is first of all something you don't have access to in real life and secondarily not something that solves most of the problems you actually face in real life. However, that said, it made me feel good. And that's the important thing. That's what it actually was trying to achieve. It made me feel like I was clever enough to solve these puzzles. And so, in that regard, I think it actually does legitimately make good on its major theme, which is, is unusual for a video game, in all honesty. So, I think I'm going to call this an absolute delight, and I'm really glad I played it, and I'm especially glad I thought to pick it up and finish playing it tonight. Uh, that's going to be the end of tonight's stream. Uh, in case you don't already know, I have a YouTube channel where I do careful, in-depth, well-researched Let's Plays. I'm starting a Let's Play of Mist, the original Mist from 1993, next week, starting on Monday. Uh, thank you so much to my Patreon patrons. And uh, yeah, drop me a follow if you like what I do. Either here or on YouTube, or ideally both. Especially share my channel with other people, I would love to grow my audience. And thank you so much for watching, and... As the game says, thanks for dreaming. <laughs>